Hey guys, Luke Inc. here. And today's video is going to be learning how to use a dip pen. So if you've just started using one of these or you've never touched one before and you're interested in trying it out, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for these tips. So getting started with dip pens is very easy. What you see here in the frame is all that you need to get started. We've got paper, ink, cleaning fluid, wiping cloth, and of course, our pens. And the pen consists of two parts. You've got the handle, which in this case is wood, but can also be made of metal or plastic. And I've got the pen nib here, which is steel. And the steel pen nib seats into the end of the wooden holder, just like that. And you are now ready to dip it into the ink and start drawing. Okay, first things first, and that is how to correctly hold the pen. We want to hold the pen with the concave surface facing down and that convex surface facing up. So it seems like the ink is going to run out of the pen, but in fact it will not. It will be held in the reservoir of the pen right here. And that is the correct way to hold the pen. So the next thing to address is how far to dip the nib into the ink. Let's look at the anatomy of this nib first. So as I mentioned, there's a concave side of every nib and a convex side. The hole in the center is the reservoir and the two halves are split so that when you apply pressure, they separate like that. And that's what creates the thickness of your line. So when I dip the pen into the ink, what I want to do is dip it no further than that reservoir. I usually like to dip it about halfway so that half of that reservoir is submerged and then when I pull it out, that pen is now loaded with ink and I can now start to draw the pen across the paper and create marks. What you don't want to do is overload the pen with too much ink. If you dip it all the way and you come out and you've got so much ink in there that you cannot see through that reservoir at all, now you're in danger of unloading all of that ink at once onto the paper, especially if your pen gets snagged or if you apply a little too much pressure, or if your pen encounters um, an area of already wet ink on the paper, the surface tension of the ink on the paper will tend to draw the ink out of your pen and you'll end up with far too much ink on the paper. So I always err on the side of not having as much ink in that nib. You can always dip again. It's a lot easier to dip again than it is to try to deal with a mess on the paper. So that's my rule of thumb. Dip it about halfway into that reservoir, come out. You can kind of wipe the nib a little bit on the, on the uh, rim of the inkwell if you want to make sure that you don't have too much. And I'm wiping the convex side, so the rounded side of the nib on that rim just to get off any excess. And now I'm free to apply that pen to the paper. So that brings us to finally, how do we move the pen across the paper? And one of the things about dip pens is that obviously they're fairly sharp. It depends what particular nib you have, and there are dozens if not hundreds of different styles. This one has a more round, slightly rounded tip compared to some others. The more sharp the tip is, obviously the more likely it is to snag in the paper. So for beginners, I recommend using number one, a fairly smooth paper like a hot press watercolor paper or a Bristol paper to eliminate snags. I also recommend using a more rigid, slightly rounded nib like this one, which is a Hunt 531. Uh, there are several 
bowl type nibs like this that might be better for beginners. Just they're a little bit less likely to snag and they're a little more durable and will hold up to some abuse. Secondly, uh, something that you want to consider is really work to develop a light touch. With a lot of different types of pens, you can really bear down and move the pen in any direction. With a dip pen, you really have to be careful if you're going to bear down. You really have to be careful that you are not moving the pen forward toward the tip because that the pressure will definitely snag that tip into the paper. So what you want to do if you're really going to apply a lot of pressure is pull the pen away from the tip like that. Then you can really get that pressure in there without fear of it snagging. So you can also move the pen laterally like this which is a little bit more natural and you can apply a fair amount of pressure this way as well if you're moving it laterally. You can hear it really scraping the paper. If you develop a light touch and you have that light touch you can move the pen in any direction without fear of snagging. It all has to do with having a really good sense of pressure. So highly recommend that you work with these a lot. Develop a really good sense of pressure and a lightness of touch that will give you a lot more ability to create interesting patterns and textures. And speaking of patterns and textures, I will also link a video below in the description that will cover some exercises that you can do to develop a better sense of pressure with a pen and create some interesting textures and patterns at the same time. And again, just to recap, see the, uh, the low angle that I'm holding this pen at. It's uh, probably at about a 45 degree angle with the paper. And again, you, you want to avoid pushing in the direction of the tip. You want to pull, either pull away from the tip toward you like this, toward your body, or move the pen laterally. So it's like side to side. maintaining that 45 degree angle to the paper. That will give you the best control and it will avoid snagging that nib in the paper. So just a couple of very simple things to keep in mind. They're small tips, but they really do have a big impact on your experience with a dip pen. And I think I mentioned already, but I'll mention it again. If you're filling in a large area with solid ink like this. You can do that with a nib. However, you want to make sure that you don't have very much ink in the pen because you're creating a very large area of wet ink. And the way that surface tension works is if I have essentially a puddle of ink on the paper and I overload my pen as soon as I hit the pen to the paper you see all that ink just ran out because the surface tension of the wet ink on the paper pulled that that reservoir of ink out of the pen and brought it onto the paper so now I have a huge puddle of ink here so if you're going to make a, uh, a large area of solid black and use a pen you want to not have a lot of ink in that pen because it's going to want to pull out. I hope that makes sense. My best advice is if you have a really large area to cover with solid ink, you want to use a brush like a watercolor number three brush or something small like that. Uh, avoid overfilling that. That's a dangerous combination of overfilling the pen and 
filling in a large area of solid black. So that's just a few uh, recaps and uh, that lightness of touch, again, very important. If you have that lightness of touch, you can really move that pen any direction you want. and It becomes more like a more like a ballpoint pen or a fine liner at that point. You have a lot more, a lot more options. So play around with that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fun things you can do with a dip pen. The uh, probably my favorite um, reason that I like a dip pen over any other pen is the variety of, well, two reasons really, the variety of inks that you can use with the same pen. So I can uh, clean this nib and I can go to a matte black ink or a dilution, and I don't have to grab a different pen. I can use the same nib. And um, it's just a lot more versatility, and the, the pressure and the variety of line width that I can get with one nib is really quite extraordinary with dip pens, especially some nibs have a lot more variation than others, but there's no other pen out there that can match the versatility of a dip pen. I mean, I'm going, I'm going from probably a two to three millimeter wide line there to half a millimeter with the same nib. So there's a lot of capabilities here in this, in this one nib. So just a few things to keep in mind. So there you go. Those are my tips for beginners using a dip pen. I hope you found value in it. Be sure to check the description below. I'll have links to the other videos that I mentioned, as well as to my Patreon, where you can find all kinds of exclusive content and videos just like this one that go a little bit deeper into my inking techniques and tips. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you around in the next one.